Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a mixed model ANOVA in SPSS. The term mixed model ANOVA refers to an ANOVA that has at least one fixed factor and at least one random factor. So taking a look at the fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, we have an independent variable. We're going to treat this as a fixed factor. It's named program, and it has three levels. RABT, psychodynamic, and waiting list. We also have a dependent variable, and let's say this is an anxiety inventory where a higher score represents a higher frequency of anxiety symptoms. And then we have a variable city, and we have three cities here, Phoenix, Arizona, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and San Diego, California. We're going to treat this variable as a random factor. So to understand the difference between a fixed factor and a random factor, we have to consider what is of interest to us as a researcher. So in the example of program, we're interested in RABT, psychodynamic, and the waiting list. There are no other levels of this independent variable that were left out that we're going to try to generalize to. This is the complete list of independent variables of interest in this study. Dealing with the variable city, we are going to try to generalize our results to all cities in the United States. So the three cities here represent a random factor. They're a sample of the total number of cities available. So we just took a sample of three cities of all the cities in the United States. If we were only interested in these three cities, in Phoenix, Scranton, and San Diego, then we would treat this as a fixed factor. So before we set up the ANOVA in the ANOVA dialog, we need to consider the assumptions. The independent variable must be categorical. We have that. The dependent variable must be continuous. We have that as well. We're going to assume that these are independent observations, which is an assumption of ANOVA. We're going to screen for outliers. We are going to check the dependent variable to make sure that it is normally distributed. And as part of the ANOVA procedure, we're going to check for homogeneity variance by interpreting the Levine's test. So first we'll take a look at normality and outliers. So we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. And I'm going to move anxiety to the dependent list list box here on the right. And under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, check off Histogram, and then check off Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue. I'm going to make no other changes here. And click OK. So you can see we have no missing cases. The Shapiro-Wilk p-value here is 0.114. That is not statistically significant with the alpha set of 0.05 because it's greater than 0.05. So we're going to assume that the dependent variable anxiety is normally distributed. And then moving down to the box plot, we can see we have no values below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker. So we're going to assume that we do not have any outliers. Then moving to analyze, general linear model and univariate. We can see here we have the dependent variable, or that's going to be anxiety. The fixed factor here is going to be program. And the random factor is going to be city. I'm going to make no changes under model or contrast, but under plots, I'm going to go ahead and plot program and add that on the horizontal axis, then program on the horizontal axis and city on a separate line and add that. So program and program times city, continue. For the post hoc test, in this case we have equal sample sizes. We have 15 observations for each level of the independent variable program. So I'm going to move program over and use a Tukey test here. 
Notice that under factors, city doesn't even appear. That's because it's a random factor. Click continue here. I'm going to make no changes under save, but under options. I'm going to display means for overall. There's no need here to compare main effects because I have a post hoc test in place. I'm going to add descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. Then click continue, and then OK to run the mixed model ANOVA. So we can see here under between subjects factors, we have equal numbers of REBT, psychodynamic, and waiting list. And we have an equal number of observations for Phoenix, Arizona, 14, and San Diego, California, 14. But we have 17 for Scranton, Pennsylvania. And you can see we have program here, and then the three cities and all the means are displayed in descriptive statistics. Moving down to the Levine's test, we have a non-statistically significant result, 0.390. So we're going to assume we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Then under test of between subjects effects, you can see we're interested here in program and city and program time city. So under program, we do have a statistically significant finding, 0 0.042. And we can see from the partial eta squared, 0.78, the program explains 78% of the variance in the anxiety variable, in the dependent variable. Then looking at the random factor city, you can see here we fail to reject the null hypothesis because we have a value greater than 0 0.05. We have 0 0.830. And this random factor only explains 8.4% of the variance in the dependent variable anxiety. And then looking for the interaction effect here, program times city, we do not have a statistically significant finding. Moving down through the output here, I'm next going to look at the post hoc test. In this case, it was a Tukey test. And it's under multiple comparisons. So Tukey HSD, honestly significant difference, is what that stands for. And you can see we have, between REBT and psychodynamic, a non-statistically significant result. 0 0.075, but we do have a statistically significant difference between REBT and the waiting list, and psychodynamic and the waiting list. And then moving down to the plots, see just looking at program on the x-axis here, and anxiety, the means, on the y-axis, REBT had the lowest mean, then psychodynamic, and then the waiting list had the highest mean. And if we look at program time city, we can see for all three cities, the means are fairly close for REBT, fairly close for uh, the waiting list, and more spread out for psychodynamic. So if these were actual data that we analyzed, we would conclude that there is a statistically significant difference between the two treatments of interest, REBT and psychodynamic, with waiting list, which is what we would normally hope to find in a study like this, that our, that our treatments worked better than the waiting list, that there was a statistically significant difference between them. And both of those are true. There is a statistically significant difference between REBT and psychodynamic with waiting list, not a statistically significant difference between REBT and psychodynamic, but we wouldn't normally expect that. And if we look at the means, the total scores are lower for REBT and for psychodynamic as compared to waiting list. And in terms of the random factor, which was city, because we have a non-statistically significant result here, and we have a statistically significant finding for program, when we combine this with the interaction effect, which was not statistically significant, we would conclude that the effect of program is fairly strong, even considering the random factor of city. I hope you found this video on performing a mixed model ANOVA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, 
feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.